A mostly higher day on Thursday, with the exception of some of the cattle contracts. Joining us to visit about that is Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. So grains had a nice strong day on Thursday, Brian, and I have to believe some of that was the market finally starting to trade weather. It is. Weather is going to be ultra critical this year more so than any other year. You just look at, for instance, the soybeans, you look at the carryout number, there's no room for air. One bushel acre yield less is a big deal. It changes carryout by 30 or 40 percent. So little numbers make big changes on, on projected carryouts. So the market is really starting to put some weather premium back in. Uh, you've got a very late crop. It got you know, when you look at the crop progress numbers of planting, that's one thing. But when, when you look at most of the crop bunched in the one window of maturity, you really need to step it up on the weather side or the weather has to really step and be good for everybody. Right now, you throw these triple digit heat forecasts out there. And if you're in drier regions, it's going to dry out quickly. And that's what the market is beginning to focus on, especially if this ridge permeates eastward from the west. There are some major issues and some major forecasters that are calling for this. Yeah, if we stay hot and dry in that extended period, say two weeks, 30 days out, Brian, I know we got technically above like the 40-day moving average again here today. Could we go back above eight or where do you project us to? Yeah, you sure could. The weather market is by far the most dominant factor. Weather is the most dominant factor that will affect production. So as we look at the longer term forecast, Michelle, if if the market believes that those are detrimental to crop yield, I would look for all time new highs in corn that would put December corn over 850. And I would suspect the beans are knocking on the door of all time new highs will quickly race higher. What's going to have to happen is the market's going to have to ration at least perceptively ration the supply on hand until it gets past weather scares and weather concerns we're just very limited it's a tight global market end users speculators will all jump on the same ship at the same time so soybeans also had a strong day and of course we did have a correction there off the contract highs some of that was kind of tied to the big correction that we had in soybean oil following palm oil wasn't it it was, and, and, and today uh, we, we saw where markets really saw the, the, the meal become sort of the star of the, right. of the complex. They really pushed higher there, and meal has been a good bargain, we think, good value all along. Oil's been a little bit more finicky. We've had the crude oil market crack back a little bit. Palm oil pushed back a little bit. Oil went on the defensive, but the traders bought the meal, sold the oil. The bigger picture complex, though, is well supported. We've seen days like this before where they'll kind of pivot around each other. But ultimately, you've got a very strong world vegetable oil market. You've got a strong energy market. You've got a strong soybean market. You've got limited supply. You won't have big production on the southern hemisphere for eight, nine months. Everything is focused on northern hemisphere right now. Yeah. And we always like to see the meal market, if it's the stronger leg of the products, that's always more positive. But there's probably been some meal oil spread unwinding too, hasn't there? Oh, I, th I think you see a lot of that. And that, that's what I alluded to before. We've seen where these pivot around each other. Right. You've got a whole sort of trade industry that loves to trade the oil meal spread. And we'll look at that continuously. So we see days where that occurs. I think we just need to take one step back. Oil is high priced. Meal has plenty of room to go higher in price if it wanted to. In, in, in particular, if you look at where the soybean futures are it's resting right now, they're just on the verge of breaking into all-time new highs. So anything less than, I think, an ideal weather forecast quickly can accelerate that rally upward. The trade loves, when I say the trade, traders, institutional traders, they just seem to love to buy soybeans when there's any hint of a weather market because of the volatility and the strength at which it can move upward very quickly. Absolutely. So the wheat market had corrected here. It looked like we were seeing some harvest pressure, but back up today, were we just following corn or what? Wheat appeared to be a follower today of corn because it didn't have that strength and it still stuck within its recent range where corn had an impressive breakout above some moving averages and wheat seemed to come along with both corn and soybeans. Wheat's the finicus, finny the most finicky market of the three when I look at corn, beans, and wheat because uh, when you look at the global picture, and wheat really is a global commodity, uh, you've got so many moving parts right now, but you're moving into the critical northern hemisphere weather 
and harvest season. Right. Yet you've got this variable of Canada being, you know, we don't know for sure what spring wheat acres are going to be, not let alone here in the U.S., but what Canada looks like. When we look at Europe, you've got dry pockets that have developed there. You've got what I call this utter chaotic mess in Ukraine, and I'm not seeing, to, at least through today, any indicator that they're, despite the United Nations working hard, I'm not seeing any positive steps that would suggest anytime soon we're going to see any wheat flow, any grain flow out of Ukraine. Now they're talking about building some silos on, on the border of Ukraine with the help of the U.S. and Poland. All of that seems to me to be, uh, let's let's call it, nothing in the immediate future that's going to solve the issue of of flow of wheat. So I think wheat, wheat is well supported, but it really doesn't have anything to give it a good boost here lately. The speculative interest, I think, is focusing a little bit more on the, in the row crops on the soybeans and how all of a sudden tight that supply looks. Yeah. Did you think there was any inflationary buying at all today? Um, we hear that thrown around quite a bit, and, and perhaps, I think if you want to talk about inflationary buying, I, I, I'm starting to wonder if the, if the because they're getting pounded so hard, if traders are just kind of done with equities right okay. now, and they're looking for something to buy that may have some positive, and with some adverse weather, it's corn and beans, okay. uh, potentially wheat. Um, inflationary, sure. I think that's going to come more with, with the livestock, though. So let's talk about livestock. Uh, cattle, we had seen a nice push this week as we had had uh, strong cash. Weather's been a factor there. A little correction today. Was that just some profit taking or what? Profit taking, I think, again, concerns over equities. Okay. Uh, they kind of pushed their levels. I don't think you're going to see any more developments in the cash market this week. We saw a stronger cash this week. Um, I think what you're also going to see is the consumer. This is where I'm going to a little bit contrarian. We talk about uh, inflation. We talk about interest rates. Those are big picture things. I think in the short term here, we had such a terrible May that in June, you're going to see that the uptick for beef and grill outs and all of these outdoor activities really takes a big push higher into the, to, to the market. And I also think that you're going to find that producers are being – very systematically closer to the knife every day. This corn price isn't a temporary thing. It's been long term and they're going to get more and more current. You're going to see the choice select spread widen out a little bit more. I continue to look at those back months. You look at 154 in the April. I think they've got it right. That's a big premium, but it's right. right. That's where the herd's going. That's where the supply is going. I continue to hear in between, uh, you know, conversations with, with producers that the, the cattle just aren't there. That is the feeders. When you go shopping for feeders, limited supplies, right. the cow herd is shrinking. It's it's a supportive long-term market. It's the economy that has people maybe shook up and maybe, you know, sticker shock at the at the store for right now that could keep a little bit of a cap on things. Yeah, but obviously the drought has decreased numbers, as you just pointed out. So the hog market, let's end there. Obviously, uh, exports were better on a weekly basis, but the cash index has been going up, and so that's kind of pushing the market. A little bit now, isn't it? It is. You know, we, we have to always, I think, when we talk about the hog market, look back the last four, five, six months, we had just this big, big rally that I think the market got way ahead of itself, and we saw 125 hogs, and there wasn't really, I think, justification necessarily for that. We weren't seeing this massive slide in slaughter numbers, anything to really promote that that would be long-lasting. And then the market quickly sold off and we went back down under 100. Now I think we've got it kind of right. The market's trying to find its equilibrium, okay. well-supported. We've got good export demand. We've got good consumer demand at home. But there again, we have to anticipate consumers kind of back away at least some. Um, the question is how much? How much do consumers back away as a whole? Because it's, it's just not like pork is high price. It's beef is high price. Chicken's high price. They're all high price. Which right. one do they direct their attention to? Is it gonna is chicken gonna win out? Probably in the short term. In the long run, people kind of get used to higher prices and say, "Well, I'm not gonna give up and eating my steaks." But for right now, steaks, pork probably take a back seat to chicken. I think okay. the hog market is probably destined to go range bound, you know, over the next several months. Thanks so much for joining us, Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing here on AgWeb.com.